Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me is Phil Japixi. Hey, Phil. Hey, Robert. How are you? Great. We are continuing in our series of design patterns, and we've uh, moved into the Studio B, just a little behind the scenes. We're taping this over the course of two days. Two days. Yesterday, we did five of what we think is going to be wind up being 10 episodes. Yes. And then we are here for the second day in the smaller studio. Different shirts. Different shirts, different, different environment. Um, more comfortable I, chairs. These are more comfortable. But I think in the, in the order of things, one of the episodes that we taped yesterday is going to wind up being after this one. Yes. So there will be some back and forth. Well, that's a TARDIS time effect that we yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Today we're talking about the observer pattern. We are. And we will uh, also talk a little bit about Publish, subscribe, pub yeah, sub. Yeah, I mean, they're a lot of times they're, they're similar. Well, they're used interchangeably a lot. Academically, they are different. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about okay. that. Uh, the code samples are all about the observer. Right. Most people don't write their own pub sub. They're using something like end service bus or yep. or something along those or lines. Or notification to do hubs or something. Yes. Right. You don't. Have, you shouldn't have to write your own pub sub plumbing. Right. So let's jump into the definition again. We're we're leveraging Wikipedia for this. So the observer pattern um, has an object, typically called the subject, maintains a list of observers, and notifies them when any state changes, using by, usually by calling a method called okay. notify or update. Uh, the biggest problem with the observer pattern is memory leaks. So in .NET, I'm going to have to have a strong reference to each of those observers, mm -hmm. if that observer gets set to null outside of the subject, the subject will not let it go. So even though you can't access it in your own code outside of the subject, mm -hmm. it's still in the list and will never be garbage collected. Is, is that, uh, does that happen a lot? Do we have to worry about that, or is it just an edge case you need to bear in mind? Well, so it does happen. Um, there's a lot of documentation out there about um, events and delegates and how they hold strong references. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, I'm going to show you a solution in .NET using a weak reference class okay. that gets past the problem. Okay. All right, so let's look at the code. Um, again, we're driving most of this through unit testing. So mm -hmm. if you haven't seen our episode on unit testing, they kicked this whole series off. Go yep. ahead and hit pause. We'll wait. <laughs> okay. This is us Welcome waiting. Welcome back. <laughs> So we have a subject that's a sports aggregator. I know you're a big baseball fan, so I wanted to come up that's with a- That's an understatement. Come up with a baseball reference. So the subject is just going out there and gathering information wherever it could, or wherever it can, about okay. different sporting events. Okay. And then it will take the list of observers. In this case, I've got a newspaper and a radio station, and they subscribe to the service. Okay. So we register them, or register them as an observer. Result with the Reds beating the Cubs. I know, man, because we're in Not rebuilding. Not this year. Not this year. No, that's true. We're doing, uh, but we we are having some struggles with starting pitching. We add a game result to the subject. So mm -hmm. however that happens, that's not really part of the pattern. It's just okay. the subject gets a new game result somehow. Yep. That's going to trigger the notify. And what we want to do is make sure in our tests that we still have the observers. In mm -hmm. They've gotten notified. They've received the game score. So we make sure that they have the game results in their list. And then we unregister the observers. We have to specifically say, I'm not paying for this service anymore. Okay. And that's the only way we can free them up. And then we just check to make sure that the observers are zero. So let's look at how we code this. We have a very simple interface because we always want to program to an interface. And it's just I subject for lack of a more creative name. And then We're we going to do an entire episode on that subject. On interfaces? Yeah. We on can. Why you say that. You should always program to an interface. Yes. What does it look like when you don't and then what does it look like if you do, and what does it gain you? So, just that's just a <laughs> just an aside. Okay. But let's do an episode on that. We will. Because you keep saying that. I do. I do keep saying it. Okay. All right. So I can register an observer. 
I can unregister an observer and I can notify the observers. Okay. Pretty simple, right? So here I have my sports aggregator, which implements iSubject, has a list of observers. When the game result gets added to aggregator, now I'm not holding on to them because again, this is just demo code. Mm -hmm. I just call notify. And notify simply goes through each observer one at a time and calls the update method. Okay. Now the observers also have an interface. One method that we really care about, which is the update, and then the list of results. So the newspaper gets updated, it adds this game box score to the results. Okay. Now the newspaper can choose what to do with it, right? It's not part of the pattern that the subject, sorry, that the observer does anything. The pattern is that it gets notified. Right. So, for example, a radio station can break in and say, hey, breaking news, the Reds beat the Cubs. Mm -hmm. Newspaper might have to wait till they actually print the next paper. Right. I was going to say episode, but paper. Or they can put it on their website, right? Okay. So it's up to them when they act on it, but the pattern is we need to notify them. Mm -hmm. We notify them one at a time. Now, I said there is a problem with memory leaks, and let me show you in this test appropriately named, doesn't handle null objects correctly. We set it up the same way. Got our sports aggregator, got the newspaper station. We register those observers. We then set the first observer, which is the newspaper, to null. We force garbage collection. But then we go through and we realize on this line right here, that we still have an observer in the collection. Okay. I can't unregister the observer. This line won't work. Because it's null. Because it's null. Right. So I can't force an unregister. The observer, sorry, the subject doesn't know that it's been nullified because it's still holding a strong reference. So this item will live on as the subject lives on. Okay. Now, time, when we're coding things using delegates or events, or even I notify property change, which is a good example of the observer pattern. Mm -hmm. When that window goes out of scope and gets closed, or where the subject gets garbage collected, then it'll free up all those resources. Okay. So you asked how much of a problem it is. It really depends on how you code your subject. If the subject is the core of your program and is around for the lifetime of your application, mm -hmm. it's a big problem. If it's just one window in a WPF application, for example, it's probably not such a big problem. Okay. Right? Now, I did say that there's a fix for this, and that's using the weak reference class within .NET. So this is something I discovered fairly recently, and I think it's really cool, although it's got very specific uses. What a weak reference does, instead of saying, hey, I want to hold on to a reference of this particular object, I hold a weak reference. Mm -hmm. And that allows garbage collection. But it does change how we code the sports aggregator. You'll notice it's a list of weak references of iCustomObserver. We're registering weak references as opposed to I custom observers. Mm -hmm. And when we notify, we have to change things a little bit. We have to, instead of just saying call notify, because we're holding on to a list of weak references, we need to get the target of that weak reference. Okay. So we call try get target, and this is a new feature in C sharp six where we don't have to declare the variable before we make it an out parameter. If it's null, we go ahead and unregister it. So we set it to null in our calling code, and we get a notification. It goes through and says, hey, I'm going to let this thing go. Okay. Because it doesn't exist anymore. Otherwise, I just call update normally. When we look at the test for this one, 
the exact same test, but we can unregister the weak reference even though we have set Oh, let me change this because I screwed up. A little live coding here. So we will. Sorry, we're looking at the wrong test. <laughs> okay. That's the problem of being live. All right. This is the same code. Mm -hmm. I register a weak reference or get a weak reference back. I set the observer to null. Mm -hmm. Call garbage collection. But now I can unregister if I wanted okay. to because it's the weak reference. Right. It's not the actual object. Okay. But I don't need to do that because the subject itself says, hey, the target of this weak reference doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to let go of the weak reference. The, the observer has already been garbage collected. Mm -hmm. Memory leak solved. Okay, cool. So that's something to keep in mind as a a tool if needed. Yeah, and like I said, I think it's it's pretty specific where you would need it. If okay. you're doing an observer pattern and your subject again is a long-lived item, mm -hmm. then you need to consider this. Okay. So let's let's talk a little bit about this versus the pub sub uh, pattern because um, the in the code we're we're waiting to be told that, that a game ha has result has occurred. Right. Right. So, and you mentioned that I notify property changed is the classic example of the observer pattern. Yes. So there's a difference between needing to know or needing a, the, an expectation that you do something versus a pub sub model where I'm publishing, you've subscribed but you may or may not do something well, with it. Well, maybe we Is should talk about the definition of the pub sub. Okay. So the pub sub is, a, again, a messaging pattern, but the publishers do not send directly to the receivers. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of intermediary, and that can have filtering, that can have routing, those types of things. But the publisher has no idea if it even has any subscribers. It's just broadcasting. Right. And... Hopefully somebody picks it up. If not, so be it, right? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the just a compare and contrast between the two. What happened? We lost the screen. So we're recording blank right now. Did this yes. come out? I don't know. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Oh, now that I've unplugged it, and plugged it back in. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so we Fun will- Fun in the studio. So we will probably cut some of that. We will cut that part. Okay, all right. So if we want to compare and contrast very simply, mm -hmm. right? So the observer pattern, everybody knows each other, right? right. I know you, you know me. Um, I have your cell number, mm -hmm. so you can text me, and you know that I know that you know that I know your cell number. Right. Right. And if I call you or text you, the intention is that the intention <laughs> is that you're going to respond. Right. Right. So like I notify property changed, you've made a change in a text box. Yes. You've changed a property. The intention is that somebody knows about it and acts accordingly. Yes. Right? It's a more direct model. Right. The intention is that you do something about it. Yeah, and again, that intention isn't really part of the pattern, but yeah, that is the practical application of it, right? Um, you send and receive one at a time. Mm -hmm. So instead of, I, I know that in texting, you can have multiple recipients on a text, right? but this is more, you text me, you text Walt, we go through the whole list of people, we're trying to organize dinner, it's all one at right. a time. Yep. Right? And it's, like we've said, direct communication. Right. The pub sub model, is, is different in a couple ways, and I think they're significant. So the sender and recipients don't know each other. I send out once, mm -hmm. it's a, like a multicast delegate, for example, on .NET. I just, you send a text message, or better yet, you put a tweet out. 
and I might see your tweet, I might not see your tweet. Mm -hmm. um, if I have filters set up and you're talking about Microsoft and something at work, like you guys have a baseball game or something, well, I'm filtering it out because I don't work for Microsoft. Right. But if you're talking about getting together for dinner at Sea Star or some other awesome restaurant here in Bellevue, then I want to receive that. Right. So there's an intermediary involved, right? And there's a third party. So that's when we talk about things like the service bus or message broker, or those mm -hmm. types of things. Yep. And those are really the biggest differences. And and again, with the pub sub, you publish, people have subscribed, but there's no Again, there's no expectation. I'm not writing the code with the intention that once you broadcast something or somebody has received that and then is notified, it's, it's um, the message is out there, you may do something with it, right. you may save them up and do something later on. There's really you know, direct or indirect or almost immediate versus potentially delayed. It's, yeah. it's kind of the way I, I think about the two. Is that Yeah, no, that I, I call that accurate. Um, there's also something that you can add on to the pub sub, which is reliable messaging to make mm -hmm. sure that it actually gets there and you're still using an intermediary. Right. But again, if we just talk about the two patterns, right, and if I'm talking to somebody directly, there is kind of an expectation that you're going to do something. Right. Like, can you meet me for dinner, yes or no? Right. As opposed to sending out a broadcast saying, anybody who wants to meet for dinner, we're going to this restaurant at 7 o'clock. Right. So, and those are the biggest differences. I, I don't know that anybody really writes their own pub sub because there's so many frameworks out there to do that. Mm -hmm. However, the observer pattern I think is, is very valuable to have in your toolkit right. uh, when you have to do that sort of one-to-one -one notification. Yep. And truth be told, we do it all the time in .NET probably without thinking about it with I notify property changed, mm -hmm. subscribing to events, and those types of things. Right. And speaking of I notify property changed, now, I didn't do a test for this because if you've been doing any sort of WPF or XAML, then you're familiar with this, yeah. right? So here's the observer. It subscribes to the property changed event. And when that event gets fired, again, the expectation is we're going to do something. Right. Update the UI, you know, change something. And that just is, again, driven by events. So we have an event, the property change event handler. This is all built into the framework, and it's mm -hmm. a perfect example right out of the box right. of the observer pattern. Yep. And, and when you would use it and why. Yes. Cool. Great. All right. So that's uh, observer pattern and a little bit of pub sub. And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox, and we will continue our discussion of design patterns. Yeah, thanks for listening.